Hey everyone, welcome to Blue Hands Video. Uh, welcome to all the new subscribers and everything. Not quite sure where everybody's coming from, but uh, most of it's actually from uh, automotive related videos I've put up in the past. And so, uh, uh, hang in there. I'll get back to automotive stuff uh, a little later. I'm kind of buried in CNC stuff. I'm actually working on automotive parts. Uh, but anyway, so what I'm uh, working on the outer bearing adapters okay nice small simple little part you would think what a pain in the butt um i've got a bunch of other video from the whole process of working through all this and it's kind of like you know maybe i'm i got to thinking maybe i'll just do one video to kind of consolidate and sum up everything that was going that i was doing and just show where i'm at now with with what is actually working uh, because all of this is going to change again because I plan on making these parts on the Nova Contours Pro when the next batch uh, I'm gonna have enough of these that last for a few you know for a year I guess I don't know um, so I'll you know when I need more I will set it all up and do it all on the uh, on the mill uh, as a mill turn or whatever I'll use the mill as a vertical lathe kind of thing so that's the plan. So I've got a bunch of blanks and stuff like that. And where I started with this is I started with a piece about this long. Not about this long. This long. Uh, and I was I was taking, cutting two out. So I would put it into the uh, chuck and I would run the bore, the, the boring bar in and take cut the inside out. And basically open it up to the size I needed. And I was having a really hard time with the chips building up in that depth. They didn't want to go out through the the hole, the pass through in the uh, chuck, the spindle bore, uh, and they didn't want to come out this way either. So I was having a real hard time with that. Okay, so I started out with this 120 wall, and and I'm opening it up quite a bit. Okay, so I was having to turn off a lot, and I what I ended up doing was uh, putting it in the manual lathe, putting a three quarter inch drill in, and just cutting most of that material out with the drill. Then I came back in with the boring bar on the CNC lathe and bored that out. And I had a heck of a time maintaining tolerance. Uh, not exactly sure why. Anyway, I was having a heck of a time with the maintaining the 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 uh, consistency. And there's the phone. Okay, so I just got done uh, answering the phone, talking to a buddy of mine. Now i got to figure out where the heck I was. Uh, so let's see here. Started out with this bigger DOM, okay, and I drilled it out, had to, uh, and then it, then as I was digging around looking for another project, I realized that I had this other smaller DOM, which has, you know, more like a 60 thou wall thickness, which I had <laughs> written right on the tubing, 521 outer, for the 521 outer bearing adapter. So it's the last DOM I bought for it. So when I bought the new stuff, I, you know, anyway, I'm not too bright. So I had so much trouble trying to do everything at one time. I would face it off, I would bore it out, and then I would cut the outside. And I couldn't, I could get the inside perfect, but not the outside, vice versa. I, I just couldn't, it kept moving. I, rigidity in the lathe, probably, I'm not exactly sure. Cut pressures, moving it one way or the other, that kind of thing. So I finally broke it down. And decided to, uh, it was something my son said, you know, was, well, what if we just do one at a time? And I was like, well, then we're going to waste it. But it's not really much of a waste because, you know, I was cutting two out of there. This stuff, this stuff actually, this is black pipe or some stuff that I was just using for practice. But anyway, this stuff's about 32 cents an inch. So I really only would end up wasting an extra 32 cents, which means the cost of each part is going to go up 16 cents negligible big freaking deal okay so that was that was out so then i cut then uh, actually andy cut most of them but we cut them down to where we can get just one part with enough for the jaw to hit there and enough room for the cutoff and everything so we're, we were working on that and finally got everything we finally got everything bored okay the ones a lot of these, this DOM with the 120 wall, I ended up having to drill out and then bore. 
uh, and we did just the boring operation. Now uh, we've got everything bored and we're having a heck of a time with the, this is where they end up after we bore it, then we do the OD cut. So we did a little face to the OD cut and we kept getting a taper. Well, come to find out the crash that I've posted a video to already knocked the spindle head out of alignment. Uh, I literally took a rubber mallet and banged it over a couple of times uh, and it lined right back up. So that was pretty nice and it's stayed in alignment so far. So once we got everything set up, then he cut a whole, whole bucket of them. And they're all really, really close, like half a thou. They kept coming off at uh, 0 0.841 and a half, and they were all right in that 841, 841, uh, 842. Uh, typically, most of them were just like right in the 841 and a half, and inside here and, and out here, both, you know, they're perfectly straight. There's no taper to them anymore. So, uh, so we were tickled pink with that. Now, I can either finish that. The other thing I need to do is. I decided not to do the cutoff at the same time because I didn't want to change the tools on the uh, on the little CNC because I'm afraid that it it just seems that you know every time I hit this thing to move it um, to change the tool and stuff like that it, uh, it it changes a little bit so you know it's like we're just plowing through with the with the one operation two operations face and OD. But for this, it's just basically the same operation. We're plowing through that, getting those all done. And then I will probably go to the manual lathe and do the cutoff. Uh, because I don't, I have a different blade to use a smaller cutoff uh, bit. Okay, this is the size of the, the cutoff tool I have right now. Okay, and that is, uh, that's a 120 wide, 0 0.120 wide insert. Okay, I've just ordered from Shars, which is where this one came from. Another one of these, same thing, except it uses the smaller GN2. This is a GN3, I think. Uh, but that'll take a week. So I, I have a blade here for the smaller ones, and they're a lot narrower. They're point, point 0.87, I think. I'll have to double check uh, what it said. So anyway, it fit in this tool holder, but I don't have... This is a BXA for the big lathe, and it won't quite fit the AXA. So I either have to modify that tool holder or something. So what I did was uh, I'm ordering another tool holder as well. I'm gonna I'm gonna do them all on the manual lathe for now because uh, I can I can plow through those pretty easy. Um, and then uh, you know the next time it's all gonna be on the other on the mill anyway. I could probably do them on here, but this thing's got to prove itself a bit more before I go through this kind of grief again. Okay, so where are we at? Uh, continue filling the bucket with those, and then I can move over and do all the uh, cutoff at the same time. Um, and then I can move on to the big inner bearing adapters, and that's going to be cutting these down. And that's going to be a lot more metal chips and a lot more work. So let's uh, let's take some video of... I actually have video already. I'll splice that in uh, of this operation, and then I'll decide. Oh, let's uh, let's go over some of the. I've got the controller turned off right now to be able to to do this. So let's pull up Mach three, and let's turn the camera toward that for. Let's turn the camera to Mach three here for a bit. Okay, I don't want to move any of these dimensions or whatever, but what I want to do is... Uh, oh, I'll have to splice in the other video because I changed this. Yeah, so originally... This was long and had the cutoffs included and the board and everything, so I'll, I'll see about putting that video in. Not quite sure how I'll splice all this. I may skip a lot of it. Uh, So I basically went in and changed the G-code and made it to where there's just two face cuts and then two uh, OD turns. And it's nice and simple. Uh, it goes pretty quick. It's about a minute and a half, two minutes maybe per, if that. Uh, and then I will... And here is... 
So there's the simple program for the bore. Now that used to be half a dozen lines when before I drilled. So and since the inside hole of this uh, DOM is 0.75 roughly, and that's what I drilled these two, I was able to use the same program for both. So so that worked out kind of nice. Um, it's just kind of a pain doing it. And keep in mind too here that I grab it, I do the inner bore, I grab it and I do the inner bore. Now I take it back out of the machine. When I grab it again, it's not going to be absolutely perfectly concentric when I cut the OD. Okay, so if I catch a couple that are way off, uh, I won't use it, but this is, this is a fixed part, not a rotating part. Um, this gets anchored to the spindle. So worst case, you know, it's just going to uh, shift things a, a thou maybe, you know. Uh, rather insignificant. Because basically what's going on here, I think I showed this in another, but whether or not it goes in here or not. Anyway, the bearing adapter goes on there because this bearing is too big. So it fits on there beautifully with that, but if... if uh, try to put it on there originally, you know, it's it's way too big. So, put it on there with that. It's uh, perfect. Anyway, I was having a heck of a time with the maintaining the, the, the uh, consistency. And there's the phone. Oh, and that's gas. <laughs>